Hello, God bless you. Hope you're having a great day. This is Brother David here. I want to bring you some beautiful scripture found in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 and 19. For as much as you know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by traditions of your father, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Isn't that beautiful? This is talking about whenever we come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. We are redeemed from the bondage of sin. Not with silver and gold. With the things of this world that will lose their luster. Not with the shiny things that tr the world tries to lure away from us from. Our walk with God. The shiny thing, look at this. Wouldn't you like to have this? The houses, the cars, whatever it may be. And that shiny thing, it's going to fade. And like I said, we have, we see people all the time. We see and hear of people. Got a lot of money. Don't want for anything. They're so miserable. Because they don't have what matters. And that's Jesus in their life. Here in verse 18, redeemed is to buy back someone from bondage. By the payment of a price to set free by paying a ransom. Redemption was a technical term for money paid to buy back a prisoner of war. Here it is used of the price paid to buy the freedom of one in the bondage of sin and under the curse of the law. Galatians 3.23 tells us that Christ had redeemed us from the curse of the law. The price paid to a holy God was the shed blood of his only son, Jesus. Silver and gold are of the earth. All things of the earth are not thought to be godly. It is really the improper use of silver and gold that is corruptible. Man's kind's desire for excess of silver and gold has made sin out of it. The father spoken of here is speaking of earthly fathers. This is saying most earthly fathers teach their children that possessing gold and silver is important. The tradition of men is to get great wealth if possible. God teaches being humble and loving your fellow man. Silver and gold cannot save us from the wrath of God. Gold and silver cannot redeem our souls. And we see in the next verse. Only the blood of the Lamb of God can take away sin. The blood of man is not without sin and can not do away with our sin. But Jesus Christ was God manifest in the flesh. We talked about that yesterday. And the blood of the sinless God that paid the price for our sin. Animals' blood could not do away with sin either. Even if it were the, an animal sacrifice for sin, the blood of the animal could only cover the sin for a year. It did not clear the conscience of the sinner, nor do away with the sin forever. But the blood of Jesus Christ, the perfect Lamb of God, was pure. Only the blood of God manifest in the flesh could take away the sin of man. The blood of Jesus abolished sin for all who believe in him. God has bought you. Sometimes a person pays money so that a slave or a person... In prison can have freedom. God paid this so that people can have freedom from their life of sin and death. He did not pay with money, but with the precious blood of his only son. We see in Leviticus 17, 14, that life is in the blood. So the precious blood of Jesus refers to his death on the cross. Precious here means to have great value and honor. 
We know that the wages of sin is death from Romans 6.23. But Jesus died to forgive our sins. And once we accept it, we as Christians will now live forever with God. And our spirit will never die. We are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. That's a beautiful promise we see here in this, these two verses. We were a slave to sin. Whether you believe it or not, you know, a lot of people think that they're free. Doesn't matter if you live in a free country or not, we're all a slave to something. You're a slave to addiction, depression, sickness, disease, whatever it may be. We're all slaves to something. But when we accept Jesus, what he did on the cross, then he, with his precious blood, buys us, redeems us from whatever we're enslaved to. And now we're his. And when we have that, and we we walk with him, we want to do his will because we're he's our master now. And that might sound a little weird to you, but as I said, whether you know it or not, or believe it or not, we're all a slave to something. Maybe you're a slave to cigarettes, pornography, alcohol, whatever it may be, marijuana. We're all a slave to something. But Jesus, he didn't buy us with silver and gold that get corrupt and perish. He, he bought us back with his precious blood that was without spot, without blemish, that was absolutely perfect. And the price that he paid will never go away. In closing, we want to share the gospel of as we do at the end of every video, because you may intellectually know who Jesus is, you may know what Jesus did on the cross, but you don't know him personally, you don't have a personal relationship with him, you never take the time to talk to him, to pray to him, to read your Bible or pray to him. And this can be someone who just doesn't believe, or maybe you're a Christian, or claim you're a Christian, you're sitting there in the pews, but you're still enslaved to something. I want to introduce you to Jesus let you know that you can be freed from that addiction, from that depression, from that sickness, from that disease, whatever it may be. The gospel in a nutshell is that because of the fall from Genesis chapter 3, sin entered the world. And sin created a wall that separated all of us from God. Romans 3.23 confirms that sin that all of sin and fallen short of the glory of God. In Romans 6.23, as we read, the wages of sin is death, which means because of our sin, not one of us is worthy to go to heaven. As we see in John 3, 16, God loved you so much that God the Son left heaven, became a flesh and blood human. 2 Corinthians 5, 21 tells us that Jesus lived a perfect sinless life. And Jesus became sin for us to pay our sins, which means when Jesus was on the cross, he put on our sins. And when we believe the gospel message, then we put on his righteousness. And then when God looks at us, he sees his son. He doesn't see us who mess up. The gospel message is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Jesus died for our sins, was buried, and rose again from the dead on the third day, according to scriptures. Romans 10, 9, if we confess our sins, if we confess our mouth, Jesus, if we confess Jesus with our mouth, excuse me, and believe in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, then we'll be saved. As we see at the end of John 3, 16, whoever believes in Jesus will have eternal life. And John 14, 6 tells us that Jesus is the only way to heaven. Jesus' blood is our ticket into heaven. His blood covered our sin debt, past, present, and future. Jesus' blood broke down the wall that separates all of us from God. 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So if we sincerely believe and surrender our life to Jesus, then you're not saying words, not trying to please someone or going to get out of a hell free card, but you really believe in what Jesus took for you on the cross and you truly want to live for him now, then you'll be saved. This is Jesus' free gift to you and all you have to do is accept it because you can't earn it. You can't earn your way to heaven. You can't be a good enough person. You can't do enough good deeds. And when we stand before God, it will not matter how much we've given to charity, 
or that we never robbed or killed anybody. Our works, our deeds are not good enough to get us into heaven. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says it's by grace we're saved through faith, not of ourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Meaning that we can earn it. We don't deserve it, but God loves us enough that he made a way. And we always follow the gospel, the warning of Jesus in return. Because right now you can personally know Jesus, but one day soon and how soon we don't know. But complete hell on earth will come. We can see it coming. The world is getting darker by the minute. The Bible predicts, and I want you to know Jesus personally before all hell breaks loose. Because right now, before the tribulation starts, we're under the age of grace. We know that right now is the easy way out. To come to Jesus, all you have to do is sincerely believe what Jesus did for you on the cross and surrender your life to him. Accept Jesus' free gift, that free ticket into heaven. But after the tribulation begins, the age of grace will be over. And as we said, the tribulation has not started yet. Because we can freely go get us a Big Mac or a Whopper. So we're still under the age of grace right now. But once the age of grace is over, you'll see terrifying supernatural events. But each day getting progressively worse. And it'll be the hard way to come to Jesus. To come to Jesus, you have to do more than just believe. You'll have to die for him. But I love you and I don't want that for you. So right now, before the age of grace is over, please turn to Jesus today. You know, many have differing opinions on the rapture. We're not here to argue about the timing or the reality of these of the rapture because these theologies really don't matter. One thing is for sure, we're not guaranteed tomorrow. We're not guaranteed our next breath, even if we are here to see some of the hell that's coming. Who knows how long we'll be able to survive, but know that one day millions will disappear, along with all the children around the world when you hear that all these have vanished. Know that no matter what we said, because based on what they're saying, that we may see aliens explain away what happened. But no, if you don't see me or hear my voice in these videos are not uploaded, if all the children around the world are gone along with millions of others, know that Jesus took us home in the rapture. If you don't know Jesus personally, please take the time to get to know him today while you still have the time. Today is the day of salvation. We don't want you to be here for any of that we just talked about. We want you to be with us. Let Jesus buy you with his precious blood. Free you from whatever has got you in bondage. In the description box we have a link to the ABCs of Salvation Sample Prayer. These are just templates, an outline of what to say when you in your prayer, but the words do not matter. What does matter is that it's a sincere prayer from your heart. I pray you got something out of the video, but don't take my word for it. Read the Bible for yourself. Pray to God. No one on this earth has all the answers. Only God does. And you only receive your answers through prayer and by reading the Bible. So just take a verse at face value. Read the verses before and after. Finish the chapter. Just random. Just picking a random verse or listen to someone preach or teach, you're not getting the full picture. And we can't even scratch the surface of what's in the Bible. So read and discover the stories for yourself. And as I say, it's always so important to read the Bible for yourself. The Bible will strengthen you and help you to face any and every trial, tribulation, temptation, struggle. So whatever you may be in bondage with right now, addiction, depression, sickness, disease, whatever you may be going through, read the Bible. Pray to Jesus. He'll help you through it. He will free you from whatever you're in bondage to right now. In the description box, we have several sources to read the Bible if you don't have a physical book. And if you don't believe in Jesus, if anything I am saying here about sin and death and hell and heaven, any, anything I say, if you don't believe it, if you don't believe in Jesus, you don't believe that he paid the price for you, that he's the only way to heaven, then pray to him. Talk to him. Ask him. To prove himself to you. Tell him you don't believe in him. But be open to accept his answer. And if you need prayer, have a praise report of what Jesus is doing in your life. Let us know in the comment section. Email us. Send us a message on Discord. We'd love to pray with you and stand in agreement with you for whatever you're praying for. We'd also like to worship Jesus with you for whatever he's made to be doing in your life. I can't wait to see what the Lord has for us tomorrow. I love you. Jesus loves you. God bless you. I hope you have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Or God willing, we'll see you in the clouds.